we don't use to the full capacity the siddur we have. Because not, so not only the prayer, but you have the history of the prayer, you also have the interpretation of the prayer. So if you're so kind, let's turn to page 170, 170, and see what supposedly we are, our ancestors understood will happen now, and what we are supposed to feel. So I'm in page 170, in my left side. As soon as the Torah scroll is placed on the reading desk, the whole congregation below should assume an attitude of awe and fear of trembling and quaking as though they were at the moment of standing at Mount Sinai to receive the Torah. And they should pay attention and listen carefully. It's not permitted then to open one's mouth even for discussing Torah, still less other are subjects. All must be in awe and fear as though they were speechless because it's written. And when Ezra opened it, all the people stood up and also in the ears of all the people were attentive to the Torah scroll. Rabbi Shimon said when the Torah scroll is taken out to be read before the congregation, the heavenly gates of mercy are open. The attribute of love is stirred up and each one should then recite the following prayer, ruler of the universe, praise be your name and your soul. You understand? So what we are saying is that every time we take out the Torah, we are trying to reenact the moment of Sinai when God, with his love, mercy, touched the people of Israel. For some people, he gave the entire Torah. For us, he gave us a minimum of revelation, a maximum of interpretation. And every generation should have the obligation of to reinterpret what they see, what they feel, inspire, obviously, in the holy book. So I just wanted to bring this to our attention because sometimes we go to the monsoon and now comes the Torah and then the Musab and then the speech and then the Kiddish and what happened inside of us. So this is the highest moment, the revelation. That's why a bar mitzvah, which you can be a bar mitzvah even if you don't come to shul, it's a status that the Jewish tradition gives to the boys at the age of 13 and a day, the girls 12 and a day. Nobody expects you to come to shul, but you come to shul and you, sit, you stay in front of the entire congregation. I want to be what my parents taught me. Oh, I want to be this. And you do it in front of the Torah, trying to feel once again Sinai. What are we reading this morning? Shoftim veshotrim. You should have uh, judges, you should have policemen, people in your gates. The rabbis go. By, by the way, imagine you live in a society where in every gate you have a judge. What's the purpose? So you will say maybe you want to consult something. So the judge is there. He's not in the Supreme Court. He's there. There's another reason. If you walk in your city, you see a judge there and a judge there, then you assume and you understand that you are not the judge. Because we live our life judging all the time. We judge all the time. So the Torah is coming and saying, you are not the judge. You appoint the judges. And the Torah goes, the rabbis inspiring the Torah goes a step further and say, gates is not only the gates in a city, in your geography, it's also in your body. This is a gate, this is a gate, this is a gate. Now put the, put the, put the, put the judge in a policeman so you don't see evil in people, so you don't pay attention when they speak about others. And God forbid you don't speak about others too. It's not only gates in a city, it's gates in your spiritual life. So if I think, if you understand that the Torah on the desk is more than a book that is our aspiration for thousands of years to change this world, which is getting worse and worse. And gates are not only in our cities, but in our bodies. Maybe this Shabbat can touch us as we are in the, in the beginning of Elul to take advantage of the next chapter in our life, which will begin with the New Year in a couple of weeks.